hi y'all and welcome back to my channel and welcome to a video that i actually haven't done in a while and i'm pretty happy to jump back on that train because as y'all know your girl loves the sassy rhetoric up on this channel it's one of my things that gives me joy and today we are going to be once again roasting the sale section if y'all have not seen my previous roasts i will most certainly leave those linked down below one of the things that i find interesting about roasting the sale section is i've said it before for the majority of things makeup doesn't typically go on sale you know when you think about closeout sales you know at hot topic at jc pennies at main retailers you know they're like end of season sales 75 percent off buy one get four free sephora and ulta kind of really aren't doing that they're not giving out natasha denona palettes for 75 percent off so when they do have a natasha denona palette that's in the sales section you sometimes kind of wonder why is it in the sales section a lot of products not all when they're found within the sales section it's more you know less that they're a really fantastic product that happens to be on clearance and more a product that hasn't been performing well that they've sent to the sales section to die like i said not every product and today if I talk about a product that you absolutely love, that is your fantastic end all be all, that is absolutely fan tucking fastic. You keep doing you, boo boo. I myself have purchased plenty of clearance makeup, some turning out well, others being not so good. Because, like I said, with some products, there is a reason why they're there. And occasionally, star ratings don't necessarily tell the truth all the time. So this is just a collection of things that I had seen while scrolling through went to Sephora as well as Ulta. This was initially going to be roasting the sales section holiday edition, but there weren't a lot of like stand out holiday releases that ended up in the sales section aside from a excessive amount of value sets and kits and little holiday sets which quite frankly we might as well start off roasting the sales section holiday sets i say it every year if you are interested in purchasing these holiday sets wait wait just just try to be as patient as you possibly can because the majority of them do not sell out and then the majority of them end up in the sales section i mean we've got a lipstick thing whatever from abh we've got a two-faced better than sex mascara holiday swan ornament you know how i feel about taking pre-existing products and then putting them in different packaging or marketing them for holiday. I hate it. I feel like it's one of those things that I've just come to know when I see the mascara ornaments or the little value sets or all the things going on like that. I just look at it and I'm like, you are created for one reason and one reason alone, and that is to eventually end up in the sales section. Well, I admit, some sets have their place and reasoning. The majority of stuff that gets coupled together for holiday is just done specifically for the reason to shill more, not to give you a great value, not to give you a good cosmetic experiment experience. It's just meant to shill and push pre-existing products that may or may not be doing well or things that they feel they can bank on forever. I mean, if I have to see one more Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara Holiday Ornament, I'm probably going to scream. It's a consistent, it's a constant thing. It happens every year and every year we repeat the same process of them releasing every brand, releasing 50 million bajillion special holiday edition things, sets, singles, you know, just releasing so many. And then they all end up in the sales section because people aren't buying them and because these companies put so much emphasis and so much money into making and marketing these special holiday edition things. They just create too much. I find it so infuriating that companies cannot make enough of a hyped up product to satisfy the demand, but they can make 
50 billion gajillion little special repackaged holiday things. Maybe it's just me, but I get a huge amount of agita from just seeing all those. I'm like, okay, there's a blush trio. There's an ornament. Okay, there's a skincare set. I guess that's kind of okay. There's a mini lipstick trio. Okay, there's a lipstick and a mascara. All right, there's a mini of something. It just doesn't do it for me, but that is just me. If you've been interested in these, a lot of them are in the sales section now. A palette that I've talked about uh, in a couple videos, I think. Not sure if they've come out yet or not. Y'all know how I am. The pre-filming game. But the KVD, the Kendo Vegan Love is All You Need Beauty came out with, uh, I'm not entirely sure of the name of it. I thought it was like the Vegan Pigments Palette. That's on sale for, you know, a fair amount less than it was retailing for. And I feel like it's there for a very specific reason. That reasoning is the fault of Kendo Vegan Beauty something something and their failure to successfully rebrand. I feel that the days of KVD, I just, I look at it and I'm like, it's just a shell of the company it used to be. Like, they're like, we're rebranding. Kat Von D is no longer part of it. And yet the brand is still sort of like, it's like being held back by the ghost of Kat Von D because the company hasn't, they've cut ties with her. But a lot of the aesthetic of the, you know, they were releasing the little mini whatevers, you know, the packaging had Kat Von D on it. You know, they weren't doing anything to really distance themselves from what they were when they started to rebrand. You look at them and you're like, okay, it's Kat Von D without Kat Von D in it. There isn't a newly established aesthetic. There haven't been a lot of well thought out products. And this palette just sort of, it looks like the sad empty shell of a Kat Von D palette that didn't actually come to fruition. Because please to tell me that this shiz does not look like some kind of holiday something something that Kat was kind of starting to bring together and then she was like, all right, time to jump ship. So she sold all her whatevers and then KVD were like, all right, well, we're rebranding. She's not here anymore, but we've got this stuff. Let's just, you know, slap vegan on it and call it a day. I do feel that a lot of KVD, see, that's what I think. Like, why is it when you go onto Sephora and you look it up, it, it's KVD. And I'm like, I'm sorry. As a makeup consumer, what do I think? I see KVD, I think Kat Von D. You know, the, the, you know, like Kendo Vegan Beauty, you know, the words, the anacronym isn't even correct. This brand's existence is just sort of an awkward blight onto what they used to be. Like if they had taken the same whatever they put into the lip vinyls and the blushes, which in my personal opinion, I believe those are products that were done and formulated and created before we began the rebranding, which is why those releases seemed a lot more thought out, better formulated. The aesthetic was still there. You know, it was kind of still this edgy alternativeness where if they had taken that same energy and continued on with it, I think it would have gone a lot better for them. They're also sort of suffering from, here's another thing. We've got stuff like the KVD Shade and Light Glimmer Palette, the KVD Metal Crush Liquid Highlighter. Those are on sale. And I feel like a lot of these KVD products that are on sale are on sale because the brand is still struggling and trying to figure out how to exist, how to rebrand. So while they're juggling the rebranding, they're also desperately trying to liquidate all of this product that they still have from being Kat Von D. And a part of me feels like they're focusing just a little bit more on the liquidation and using up old, still Kat Von D branded packaging than they are doing actually any real work at rebranding and establishing themselves as a company outside of what Kat Von D had created. Because it's very difficult to disassociate from the brand when it literally is KVD. That brand had existed for a very long time, had a very long, good reputation. And then to kind of just come to this awkward, like, ah! false stop where Kat Von D is suddenly removed from the picture. I feel like they should have just taken it and just been like, Kendo, 
beauty. They could have maintained a sleek black packaging sort of aesthetic and maintained that alternative edgy whatever while being kendo beauty focusing on veganism if they wanted to but really still maintaining and holding on to that kvd has just really really not been successful for them obviously i'm not a makeup manufacturer i am not a makeup company owner but i feel like it's almost even simple logic where you look at it and you're just like you know which one of these is not like the other but they're very very similar still and that palette just really suffered from the fact that the brand hadn't been able to establish itself besides sort of a mediocre lukewarm watered down version of Kat Von D. Okay we're gonna talk about one that's just kind of like maybe I get offended too easily maybe I find some things a little bit off-putting more than I should maybe I just I feel too intensely but I'm scrolling through and I'm going about Peter Thomas Roth I love a lot of his skincare. I've tried a fair amount of it on my channel and have enjoyed the majority of the stuff that I've tried. However, just because you are a bougie, bougie, pricey, pricey, expensive skincare brand does not give you the right to market and sell to me, I believe $16 hand sanitizer? I understand companies are trying to come to terms with this new normal here, but I feel like a new normal shouldn't involve an expensive skincare brand coming out with hand sanitizer. Is it just me? I'm like, I would love to see the panel of research done on this sanitizer for them to come out and say, yes, we're gonna charge $16 for this and we're gonna show you why it is better than just the kind you can get at the store for five bucks. I also have certain um, objections to a high-end luxury brand creating a product that at one time was completely inaccessible to the everyday person. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm too easily offended, but I can tell you right now, the last person, I mean, it's the kind of thing like Pierre Thomas Roth, we do skincare, but here's some hand sanitizer. I'm like, there is nothing, nothing about that hand sanitizer that is going to make me want to buy it for $16, let alone to $8 it's on sale for. I just don't, it's a, it's a I need to calm down. I'm going to have an aneurysm. I'm going to have a stroke and y'all are going to see it right here on camera. It's like, you know, they're coming out with like hand sanitizer. It's like if any, like, you know, if Glow Recipe was like hand sanitizer or like Dr. Brandt was all like, well, I guess we'll create hand sanitizer. It's just one of those dumb things that honestly came out of that whole makeup companies trying to market off of the new normal. And like I said, maybe it's just me. Maybe this is just the way of the future and I'm all whatever and I can't understand the importance of a expensive skincare marketed hand sanitizer. I just don't understand the need, the market at all. Like I said, I have issues with these companies taking this and being like, oh, well, you guys need hand sanitizer? Here's an $18. I just, oh, I hate it. I saw that and I was like, no wonder it's in the sales section because it's stupid. You know, I'm not going to be going out in public and going to Walmart and being like, mm, well, let me sit over here and sanitize my hand with my Peter Thomas Roth hand sanitizer. It's not happening. And I don't think it's anything that really came out of a place of being like, you know, I feel like we are a company that is so passionate about hand sanitizer. We need to make our mark on that particular niche of a market. Now, they did it because they figured they were going to make a little bit of extra money taking hand sanitizer and putting their name on it. I honestly hope they lost a lot of money on creating that because it's just ridiculous. It's the same thing when, was it Monet, one of those MLMs, and they were like, well, for every, you know, billion dollars you purchase, you get a free little hand sanitizer because we're helping everybody. Feel like as a company, it maybe would have felt a little bit better. Take the money that you put into all the not marketing you did for 
the bougie bougie hand sanitizer and just donate the money to actually making people oh wait you're not gonna do that because you're a company i apologize for that i just felt all kinds of ways and i still kind of do we got some color pop going in the sales section and if i'm being quite honest i feel like color pop has become a brand where a lot of its products sort of let's just say they're very sales section compatible like you see these things and you're like yep that does absolutely nothing it adds nothing to the market it adds nothing to anyone's collection it's the exact same thing they released eight times already this year it's probably gonna go on sale because if people are buying ColourPop consistently they already have this shiz they had it six months ago. So there is the Minaj a Mauve. Oh, that hurt to say. The Minaj a Mauve and the Boudoir Noir, which I mean, they're ColourPop palettes. That is the point I have reached. I am so sorry for all y'all who've been with me, been riding through this whateverness and like just me talking about ColourPop. Every time I talk about ColourPop, I'm just like, there's just, there's just too much and it makes sense to me this isn't so much roasting as it is like a natural series of events that make a lot of sense where it's like when you release so much and you have so much turnover your products going on sale is pretty much inevitable and like every other palette that ColourPop does these two palettes aren't anything exciting or interesting it's like oh look it's a bunch of this kind of neutrals. And oh look, it's a this tonal neutral palette this time that we put a cute little god awful painful pun on the packaging and sold it because at this point those are all the shadows we have in the back and we need to use them up. I'm honestly surprised that a lot of their stuff doesn't go on sale more. There is still such a like die hard cult following for ColourPop. I don't know why some of their shiz sells out still. I mean I know why, because they put licensing on it and they're like, we'll hype this shiz up and it's gone in two seconds. But like even their other stuff, like they come out with everything and everyone loses their mind. I'm like, people, no, 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 stop. It's just the same thing. If you don't have the money to buy it now, just wait. In a couple weeks, they'll come out with the other same thing. And then if you really don't have the money to buy that new same thing, Wait a little bit longer and it'll be in the sale section now. I just, ColourPop at this point is like an enigma in and of itself. ColourPop takes up a large percentage of the makeup marketing on a whole. They're just like their own little mini universe. They don't abide by any normal rules that take up any other company. They are just their own thing. They adhere to their own laws and their own idiosyncrasies and they're just like turning in this own little nucleus that's just exclusive to them. Like I said, I'm surprised I don't see more ColourPop stuff in the sales section, but if we're going to be talking about ColourPop in the sales section, we might as well address the Candyland eyeshadow palette, which I remember when that shiz released. I remember that that shiz was sold out and that people had the audacity to take that collection and charge twice to three times the price it retailed for because it was the PR box, because it was Candyland, because it was nostalgic, because it was something people wanted. I swear I still need to make that why I hate makeup scalping video. It's coming. I'm doing research. But if you look at this palette, on a whole, I can understand why it is in the sales section. I have had a couple of y'all tell me that you really like it. It's a very nice pastel palette. That's absolutely amazing. But looking at it kind of on its own, if it didn't have the Candyland theme attached to it, if it didn't have all that nostalgia and all the what it, it's just a pasty little sad pastel -y palette that doesn't have a lot of gradation or definition. It is a beautiful example of ColourPop simply going through their files, pulling out a license something, slapping it on some packaging, kind of fiddling around and doing the bare minimum to meet that aesthetic, and then shilling it and hyping it up so that people buy it, it sells out, and then people are charging $50 million for it more than it was actually selling for. It's this terrible, awful, toxic cycle that ColourPop just keeps feeding 
into. I feel like I need to do a whole video discussing ColourPop because as much as I love a lot of the products I have by them, I've said it so many times, I am just a record just playing over and over and over again discussing the issues I have with ColourPop. And it's a conflicting place to be because I love monochromatic palettes. Chef's kiss, amazing. But then they do shiz like this, and then they just have all this stuff, and they hype it up, and they're like, it's the most amazing thing ever. And then it shows up in the sales section, because if you strip away all that pop and circumstance and all the hyping up that ColourPop does and that Trend Mood does, it's just another palette that happens to have intellectual property on it. That is what it is being sold as. Not as quality makeup, not as any kind of, but the aesthetic, the theme, and the nostalgia, and the licensing is what's really being shilled to you if we just strip it down to basics. I feel like y'all, a lot of y'all are just sitting there being like, all right, Thraya, tell us how you really feel. If I told y'all how I really feel, I'd probably de be demonetized in like two seconds. All right, moving on to something fairly random. I was just scrolling through the Sephora sales section. I was like, huh, all right. I can completely understand why that is in the sales section, which may not be any fault of its quality, but sort of, kind of, okay, all right. Marc Jacobs, whose products I find tend to, especially when he does like limited edition releases and holiday releases, a lot of his stuff has a fair amount of rotation through the sales section. That's just me, just calling it how I see it. And this particular product, it is a limited edition black lipstick. Now your girl, I got all kinds of goth in me. I got all kinds of baby bat, whatever. I have used my fair share of black lipstick. And being a fairly somewhat okay fan of his lipsticks, at the time, whatever, I could understand how I would like, all right, this formula would probably be nice, but while Marc Jacobs as a human being, as a designer, is, you know, kind of more cutting edge, more out there, more like someone who would tend to push the envelope more, I feel like his demographic isn't one that's looking for a black lipstick. I could be entirely wrong, but I feel like the demographics that are buying from KVD, buying from Jeffree Star Cosmetics, purchasing from Urban Decay, even Too Faced is a more demographic that would be, oh look, here's a luxury high-end black lipstick. I don't think Marge is going to the Marc Jacobs counter thinking she's gonna get her Morticia Adams on with a black lipstick, but if she is, that is absolutely fantastic. You keep doing you, boo-boo, and you keep it pushing. But looking at this, I can feel like I understand why it was in the sales section because yeah, it may have been a cool nifty thing that was like kind of just a little bit out there. I don't think it was really something that would have been embraced by his makeup's demographic, coming from a price point, coming from his like high end kind of leading into luxury price point. I mean, let's not forget that this brand is the same brand that had the audacity to charge us $99 for his holiday palettes, and I was a moron. I bought one of them. But when you take that into consideration and you take the kind of like makeup that he's exuding, you know, yeah, he's got kind of like a little bit of like a kinky, a little bit of like sexual innuendo, but so does NARS. I haven't seen NARS come out with a black lipstick. Could be wrong. Let me know if I am down below. But just seeing it sort of in hindsight, I'm just like, yeah, I wouldn't be pulling up to Marc Jacobs for a black lipstick. That's not something that I think his brand would be supplying. Obviously, this was a limited edition item, which I think was a good move in their part because I just don't think them being like, all right, we are now adding black to our list of lipstick colors. It's just kind of like, but why? Like I said, if you're in that whatever demographic is, I have no research, I have no spreadsheets, I'm simply going from my own knowledge of the market, which is 
probably uh not a lot but i can see this black lipstick and being like okay i can understand why that would be something that was released by this particular company that would then be kind of just shifted into the sales section because it was just put out into a demographic that wasn't really looking for it in the first place. All right, let's talk about a product in the sales section that I actually own and have and enjoy. So, I mean, I do go both ways. You know, I have, like I said, purchased my fair share of on sale items. And this is one that I purchased and that I enjoy and that I say for the on sale price point, sure go ahead but most definitely do we not advocate for it uh, at the full normal price point it's in the sales section because the price point this company was charging for this particular product was absolutely asinine and absurd and that is the natasha denona i believe diamond glow face palettes i received some sort of money from something somewhere i bought both of them i'm a moron because there is a huge amount of similarities between the two but i bought them because there were 44 instead of 89 and i don't care that they're this big i don't care that you get a big old whatever of prada 89 dollars for a face palette this better be the face palette to end all face palettes. Which while it being good, it definitely wasn't. I would say just take that money and buy the Bloom and Glow or the Love palette. Now don't go around being wasting $89 on this thing, which the formulas inside are nice. But what I would like to reiterate is the fact that I bought it for $44, not $89. Not saying that the quality isn't good, but for that original price point, that's really, really stretching it thin to say my face palette is worth $89 because let's just face it, it's not. And that's why it's continuously in the sales section. I have seen it flip flop back and forth between sale price and full price, which kind of leads me to believe that when it's in full price, people aren't buying it. So they're like, all right, we got to knock it down again for people to actually buy this shiz. When you start off with products that are so exorbitantly priced, especially when you don't have the quality to back up that price point. Cause like I said, I like them. They're nice. I have them. I use them but I like them for 44 and I would never tell someone to go out and buy them at 89. And there's some pricey, pricey, bougie, bougie makeup that I have and I enjoy. I've talked about Viseart. I've talked about Natasha, d d you know, the little four pan face palettes, $65 eyeshadow palettes, go ham, go all day. But for some reason, when it comes to her products, the closer they get to $100 for me, the less amazing they end up being. And I'm not entirely sure what that's all about, but as someone who owns and has tried this particular product, I can completely understand why it would be in the sales section because it's too expensive for what it is you're getting. A lot of product doesn't necessarily merit a higher price point if the quality isn't there as well. I've had a whole thing before talking about makeup we love to hate, talking about like these makeup artists who come on the scene and make their makeup lines and charge these exorbitant amount and prices for their formulas. And I'm just sitting here wondering what makes your makeup artistry talent the rationale for why we're charging $89 for a face palette, especially for a face palette that has cream products in it. While I appreciate the cute little plastic flap that keeps things from contaminating and probably gives it a little bit of a longer shelf life, I don't think a little plastic flap is what's making the price go up to $89. I really, really don't. I could be wrong, but I just see it there and I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I bought you for $44 because I enjoy you, but oh, Boy, 89, I think it was one of y'all because I had been lusting after these palettes and one of you were like, hey, that shiz is like 50% off right now. And I was like, F me up. And it does F me up for $44, not for 89. I see that in the sales section and I feel completely justified. I'm like, yep, that's, that's trial, jury, whatever. I absolutely respect the decision that was made to put that thing in the sales section kind of in the same way that i understand why the tropic palette went on sale it's like all right 
This stuff is expensive, but it's actually kind of not that good when you take into consideration how much you're paying for it. But those are all the products I'm going to talk about today. Day. I really enjoy doing these videos because y'all know the kind of content I enjoy doing. We are going to be getting a couple different kinds of content as well, but I do enjoy doing these sassy talky talky videos. I say it every single time. I don't know why I have to keep telling y'all that this is a lot of content I like to do, but I have recently received just a little bit of backlash, a little bit of hue and cry about kind of me not doing as many reviews, not doing get ready with me, not doing basic uh, makeup related content, which I mean, when you're buying less, there is, you know, and if I'm not buying every other palette that gets released, I'm not reviewing every other palette that gets released. So I just hope you enjoyed this video. Would love to hear what y'all have to say about the products. We all have different opinions, different desires. You just keep doing you and I will keep doing me. But thank you guys so much for watching. I love you, and as always, keep it real. Mwah!